Hey guys, Alex Sutherland here, and today I am making a tutorial video for the simple postflop preflop solver. Um, this is what you're going to need either if you're using their CAD cloud computing service to submit a calculation for them to run on demand, or if you have the standalone SPF license and you want to do preflop computations on your home computer. So this is the preflop interface. You get it just from the regular simple postflop stand standalone version. Go to preflop, click heads up preflop and it will open up. Before we get into actually setting up a game tree, I just wanted to show what the settings look like and explain a few of the modes. Um, the settings has a few options. The calculation accuracy, that's going to be how low your Nash distance is. Uh, I usually keep this at low to reduce the computation time, but if you have something where you really want the results to be super accurate and you don't mind it running for a long time, you can adjust this to low, medium, and high. Um, the calculation compression uh, it tr sets what level of memory compression you want to use. So the way SPF works is you'll have your base memory, and then depending on the level of memory compression you use, you'll be able to run bigger and bigger calcs. So for example, on this PC I have 32 gigabytes of base memory. If I set the memory compression to none, the biggest tree I'll be able to build will be a 32 gigabyte tree. If I set the memory compression to 4x, I'll be able to run a 128 gigabyte tree. The downside to using the memory compression is that the higher it is, the slower the calculation will run. Um, but you can't do very much with a 32 gigabyte tree, so unless you have a home PC that happens to have a ton of memory, you're going to need this memory compression on. At a high level, if your home PC has less than 8 gigs of memory, uh, 8 or less, you're not going to be able to do a lot with custom uh, preflop calculations on your home computer, which is why the simple postflop cloud is so useful. For large calculations, no home computer is going to be sufficient, and you'll need the simple postflop cloud anyway. And the way that you set up a uh, local calculation or a remote cloud computation are exactly the same, so this video will apply either way. Okay, next you can tell how many cores you want to use. It'll max out at the number of cores that are available on your machine. Uh, if you want to be able to use your computer for other stuff without it lagging while the calculation is running, um, I suggest putting this at half of your cores or less. If you're you know, going to go to bed and leave it running on your computer overnight, or if you have a dedicated machine for running prefile calcul calculations, then you can turn this up to use all of your available cores. And the computation speed is approximately linear in the number of cores. So if you go from four cores to eight cores, it'll run about twice as fast. So the next option is to save the flops. This means that it will, s to solve the preflop game tree, Simple Postflop solves out every possible flop, turn, and river. And there's not an option to save all of those solution portions because the file size would be enormous. But you can save the flop components of the solutions which is useful if you want to browse the solution later. For all uh, remote calculations that you run in the Simple Postflop Cloud, they will automatically come with the option to download the flops as a zip file, and you'll get the flop calculations that were done for free. If you're running them locally, you'll need to check this box if you want to save the flop file. And then this, of course, is the directory that the flop files will get saved to. So that is the high-level settings. Let's uh, get into how we actually build a game tree. So I'm going to show you guys how to approximate a, or how to set up a button versus big blind situation in a three-way pot, um, because that's a little trickier. If you want to just do a heads-up pot, uh, it's a little simpler, and I'll show you exactly where the steps diverge. The first step is going to be choosing our effective stacks. I'm going to set up a 20 big blind deep situation. And then the next step is going to be to set the small blind, the big blind, and the start pot. The way Simple Postflop works, it's going to assume that one player is going to play this, going to pay the small blind, and one player is going to pay the big blind. So if you want to simulate button versus big blind after the small blind is folded, what you're going to need to do is take the small blind amount and put it in the start pot, because that's dead money, and then you take the small blind and set it to zero. That's what the button pays to enter the hand. Uh, if they choose not to raise, it will be zero, and then the big blind can always be one. If you want to do a heads up pot instead, you would change the start pot to zero and the small blind to 0 0.5. And this would represent that one player has to put in half a chip to start the hand, one player has to put in one chip. Since we're doing button versus big blind, I'll put it back like that, and we can move on. The next step is you're going to choose your high level post flop bet sizing. So you can put in multiple sizes per player, all in shoves all the usual bet settings that you can use in SPF. You can use any of your saved uh, bet sizings that you have. Um, for this example, maybe I'll do half pot all in. This is the save one I have, just as half pot or all in on every street. Um, and you're going to set that for both players. This is just going to be 
at a very high level. It's kind of like the base settings the tree will use, and then we'll be able to customize that for specific situations, like the three bet pots, the single raise pots, etc., as needed. But you start with some base bet setting that's been used by default on all nodes. Then you'll need to say which player is going to be out of position on the flop. So if you're doing like a heads up scenario versus a blind versus blind scenario, you might want to change this. If you're in six max and you're doing small blind versus big blind, obviously the small blind's out of position on the flop. If we're doing button versus big blind modeling like we are here, then the big blind will be out of position on the flop. So I have that set to player two. Then you can decide if you want to include rake or not. I'll be messing around with something kind of spin and go related. So I will not include rake. And once that's done, you can click Apply Situation. Now, one thing that is tricky about this interface is we're going to go now and build out our entire game tree. And the game tree starts basically blank. It starts with a fold and an all-in. If we go back, uh, we can always go back and change some of these previous settings by clicking Clear Situation. But when we do that, it will erase everything we've built in our game tree. So we want to think carefully and make sure these steps, these settings are good. Uh, double check them, double check these effective stacks, double check the start pot, etc. before we actually click apply situation and start building our tree. I am hoping that they're going to uh, improve this in the future and make it a little easier to go back and forth between these things, at least um, for some settings, like switching which players out of position, stuff like that. But for now, this is a spot where if you don't want to risk having to redo some tree building work, you want to be careful. So now, what we're going to do is we're going to build out our pre-flop bet sizes. I'll show you guys how you can customize the post-flop bet sizes uh, at various levels of detail. And then once that's built, we're going to click Send, and the little arrow for Send lets us either calculate it on our own computer, or s clicking Send itself will send it to their cloud for computation, which requires having some simple post-flop pre-flop points available, which you can buy on their website. And we're going to need to set the subset of flops that we want to use. Um, 1755 is going to be every possible flop, 130, 884, or 75 or 25 are subsets of the flops that have been designed to be as representative as possible of the average flop outcome. For our pre-flop solution to be accurate, all we need is that the post-flop EVs are approximately right. So we will usually be able to get away with using subsets. Um, and we're going to need to certainly for any local calcs if you're running a calculation that you're going to solve on your own machine you'll almost always run out of memory if you use anything more than 25. If you're doing a calculation on the Simple PostFlop Cloud, you can use any of these options depending on how much money you want to pay, and there's going to be a trade-off between calculation accuracy and cost. For the pre-computed Simple PostFlop packs that they compute once and then sell to lots of people, uh, I've designed several of those and I tend to err on the side of being thorough, so I use the 184 subset. For most calculations that I do for my own purposes, I err on the side of the 74 subset. I think the 25 subset is really only good for exploratory calcs that you are using to kind of answer some very specific questions about bet sizing or uh, strategy level EV. It's not going to be very accurate at the combo by combo level. So for the case of a demo, I'll set this to 74 flops and then go ahead and start working on our game tree. So I'm going to include an open shove, that's this first node. I'm not going to include a limp, but if I wanted to, I would go add call. And I'm going to include one raise sizing, and I'm going to look at using a min raise here. Then against the min raising, I can expand this node. I'm going to include the option to shove, and I'm going to add a non-all-in 3-bet to uh, 4.5. And then as a 4-bet, I won't include a non-all-in 4-bet, I'll just include a shove. And so my pre-flop game tree is built. Now, like I said, we may want to customize our post-flop sizings based on the situation. So there's two ways to do that. One is I can right-click on any uh, call node that goes to the flop, and I can set the player one and player two or both players bet sizing for this particular node. So I'm not adding the game tree specifically, but I might say in general, I'm using my half pot all in, but in the uh, three bet ca case, I'll use a 33% all in. This isn't a great setting, I'm just giving you an example. Um, and I could do that for one player or both, and click Apply. That's what that node would be. If I want to get a little more fine-grained, what I can do is I can click on any call node, and I can click Go to Tree. Or I can click Open Flop Tree, and load in a saved flop tree. So if I click Go to Tree, it'll actually take me into the simple post-flop post -flop interface, and now I can actually edit the tree in detail here. So I can do something like delete the donk shove, maybe I want to customize the check raise size here, go to edit node, say I want to make it 
And then I can even go into future streets. So if I want to go into the turn after a check call, and maybe uh, I, know I could delete these donk nodes after check call, and go in here and remove the non all in check raise, some, some kind of customization like that. I can customize the post flop tree as much as I like. And when I'm done, I go over here, click this little down arrow, click Save Preflop Branch, and that post flop tree that I just built is now loaded into the outcome of this node. And just to see that it works, you can click Go to Tree, and all my various changes, like the three bit size, will be reflected. So once you have built your preflop tree, set up your post flop uh, nodes the way you like them, you are now ready to go. And so you can either go to Calculate if you want to run it locally, or click Send if you want to send it to the SPF cloud. This tree um, would probably, because it uses a 74 flop subset, and because I only have 32 gigs of RAM, my guess is that even on a 4x compression setting, I still would not be able to run this locally, but I could try. Um, it'll bring up an error message. If it doesn't have enough memory, I'll let you know. If you click Send uh, and send it to the cloud, which I'll do here because this account has no preflop points, it'll tell you how many preflop points it will cost to run the tree, and you would know how many to buy, and then you click Yes, it'll start running it if you have the preflop points or tell you you need to go buy them if you don't. So that is that. I think um, the only other thing I want to show you guys quickly is what a solution looks like once you get it. So if you run the solution locally, you can always open it with file open here. If you get a cloud solution that you've computed via their cloud, um, it'll show up like this. And you can double click it, open it. The, to get the post flop components of it, you can click download flops on any of these. And then you can browse the solution as you like. View the ranges. And that is it. Thanks for watching, guys.